Hello! Welcome to the Polyglot Files. My name is Michael, and today we're talking about a very interesting language isolate called Worao. For those who don't know, a language isolate is a language that seemingly has no linguistic relatives, living or dead. Oftentimes, these languages cannot be traced to an earlier linguistic ancestor, and they don't seem to have any known sister languages that can be linked to the language isolate. Some of the best known language isolates are Korean and the Basque language, spoken in southern France and Spain. The specific language isolate we're talking about today, Warao, is spoken by about 20,000 people in the Orinoco Delta in Venezuela, as well as in Suriname and Guyana. The Warao language is spoken by the Warao people, an indigenous population who has lived in the region for 9,000 years. In fact, this people's name, Warao, actually translates to boat people because of their dependence on rivers and lakes for food, water, and transportation. This tribe's relationship with the water is so great, in fact, that they built their houses on stilts over the marshes and the bogs of the delta. When Europeans came to the area, the construction and organization of Warao houses actually reminded them of Venice. And in fact, they called the region Little Venice, or Venezuela as we know it today. As I stated, Warao is a language isolate, meaning that there are no known linguistic relations to any other languages, and we're going to come back to that. But most interesting of all, there is something very peculiar about the Warao language. When it comes to syntax, or in other words, word order, there are theoretically six possible ways for us to construct sentences in any given language. For example, the English language employs a subject, verb, object word order, meaning that if we had a sentence like, I like linguistics, we have I coming first as the subject, like coming next as the verb, and linguistics coming last as the object of my verb. In fact, this word order is the case for 42% of the world's languages, other languages including Russian or Mandarin. But this word order is not actually the most used word order by languages. In fact, 45% of the world's languages actually use a subject-object-verb word order. This includes languages like Japanese or Latin. And then coming in third at 9% of the world's languages, we have the verb-subject-object word order. Irish is a good example of that, a language that I spoke about in this video. <laughs> So with those three word orders alone, we have 96% of the world's languages accounted for. That leaves just 3% of the languages to have a verb, object, subject word order, and then just 1% of the world's languages having an object, verb, subject word order. And then, right at the bottom, we have languages with an object, subject, verb, word order. Languages that number at just under a dozen spoken on Earth. These languages are so rare that some linguists even argue that they might not even exist. And you guessed it, Warao is one of those rare languages with an object, subject, verb, word order. For example, let's look at the Warao translation for the woman puts on a dress. If we translate it literally into English, we actually get the dress the woman puts on. The object being the dress, the subject being the woman, and puts on being our verb. This gives us an object-subject-verb word order, and while it's easy for English speakers to understand what that sentence may mean, it is very unnatural for languages to construct sentences in this way. Even in our second sentence, a snake bit Enrique, we actually get Enrique a snake bit, object-subject-verb. But the interest in Warao doesn't stop there. Let's bring back the fact that Warao is a language isolate. Now, there are a couple languages in the Amazon basin that do have an object-subject-verb word order. These languages include Aparina, Zavante, and Kayabi. But these languages have a relatively limited number of speakers, and besides similar word orders, these languages have no linguistic relation to the Warao language itself. There is one language that shows significant similarity to Warao, though. Due to connecting similar grammatical forms such as nominal and verbal affixes, a linguist named Terence Kaufman actually found that there may be a relative. In 1994, Mr. Kaufman linked Warao to another language isolate, Temukua. The catch? Temukua was extinct in the 18th century, and it was spoken in northern Florida. 2,200 kilometers away from the Amazon basin. 
Further work on the connection has never been done, and with Tamukuwa being extinct, further work may be very difficult to follow through with, but between an object-subject-verb word order and a strange, elusive relationship with a language in northern Florida, Warao is probably one of the most interesting language isolates. What do you think? Are there other language isolates that are more interesting than Warao? Let me know in the comments below, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching the Polyglot Files. See you next time!